Well, good morning. I'm uh, here in the north of Cyprus enjoying an amazing uh, break, a great rest. Today is Wednesday. I've come down on the beach and as you can see behind me, the sun is rising and it reminds me of the scriptures that talks about the Son of God who rises in our hearts. And so often in life we let the, the cares of the world crush us when all the time, if we would just turn to the Creator God, the one who created this amazing sun, this amazing creation, you know the, the scriptures clearly say, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And he talks about putting lights in the sky. And this morning, what a wonderful opportunity. I cannot tell you how blessed I feel just to be able to take time out of work and the busyness in England and, and to come here. And this is my favorite place, to be honest, when I come here. It's a place where, you know, I, I tell you, you're Matthew 6, 6, about going into your room, closing your door and praying to the God who you do not see, but he who sees you. And when I come on holiday, this is where I come. I come down to this beach here, this place. It's an isolated beach amongst the rocks and the sea, as you can probably hear next to me, what it's like not 15 feet away from me and the waves are crashing. And we're amongst these rocks and we're in this most beautiful place and we're seeing the sunrise. And I want to encourage you in your faith to take a tip out of Matthew 6, verse 6. And bring all your cares and bring all your troubles. Go in that room. Close that door. Kneel down because the God who you do not see, he sees you and he looks at your heart. We have an amazing God. We serve an awesome God. I cannot, uh, I am so blessed and I am so honored to be able to know Jesus, to be able to be one that has found him, to be able to be one that has bowed the knee, to be able to be one where the light shone. Once I was in darkness, but now I am in light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If anyone comes to me, anyone, he's the light of the world. Jesus said, I am standing at the door, Revelation 3:20, and knocking. And if you would just open that door and I'll come in. And so often what happens is in life we get crushed. You know, the parable of the sower where Jesus talks about the, the farmer sowing seed. And he said, some falls on the path and gets snatched away by the birds. Some falls on the stony ground and it starts to grow, but then it gets dried up. There's no moisture, so it shrivels. Some falls amongst the weeds and as it grows, the weeds grow and the weeds choke it. And that's the area where many, many, many of us fail because the weeds, which represent the difficulties in life, you know, the uh, the things that we've experienced with coronavirus, suddenly people dying or people we never knew, people we never thought, suddenly or not even coronavirus, just in life, losing people or in life, losing our job or being bullied. Oh, there's so many, or being sick, there's so many things in life, the weeds that crush us. And they can strangle us. <laughs> and they can stop us from just realizing who we are in Jesus Christ. So this video is right, just the first one. I have no scriptures down. Actually, I came down here just to see what it would be like. And yet, God, I don't need scripture when we've got that. Because if that doesn't tell you that the Son of God loves you. Amazing, amazing view. Amazing, amazing picture that God provides everything. I didn't need the book. <laughs> I didn't need the book. I've got the hand of the creator himself. Look at that. The sun. The sun. And this uh, amazing sun. I just want to encourage you in your faith. The same God that spoke the sun into being. The same one. I want to encourage you. It's the same God. He loves you. He's the one that sent his Holy Spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, hey guys, listen, 
I'm going to leave you. I'm going to be going to heaven, but don't worry, there's one that I'm going to send to you, a counsellor, a helper, and he'll come alongside you. He'll come alongside you. Just pray and ask my father to send him, and he'll come. And some of us, we're too proud. We need to surrender everything, our pride, everything, because the same God who created the heavens and the earth, the same God who created this sun, this wonderful sun that's coming up amongst the mountains. This is the same God and as we come before God and as we hold our hands up, our sinful hands really, because there's none of us all have fallen short of the glory of God. And look at this magnificent rising sun. I want to encourage you today to let the Son of God rise up in your heart. Yes, you did open that door. Yes, Jesus did come in. And yes, he does provide for us. And he is the Son of the living God. And this sun that's coming up over the mountains now is the same God that said, let there be light. And there was light. And I want to encourage you today, let there be light in your life. It doesn't matter what you've done. You know, in Psalm 23, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in pastures green. He leads me by still waters. He comforts me. He comforts me. And this God wants to comfort you. He's a God of comfort. He's a God of provision. He provides the sun. He provides the light. He provides everything. This is our God. This is our God. We are so blessed beyond measure. We have an amazing God. And I'm just here today to, to encourage you. To encourage you. Why don't you let this son of the living God, why don't you let him, why don't you let him come into your life? Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door, open the door. You know, in John 3, 16, we read, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And I want to encourage you today. Do you want everlasting life? Look at this. Look at that son. How beautiful is that? I don't want to spoil it, but do you want everlasting life? Do you want to enable the God of all creation? Do you want the God of all creation to lift you up today? To lift you up today? We are so, so blessed. You know, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people will humble themselves and pray, will humble themselves and pray, that God is a God. You see, he wants us to see. He wants, you know, when, when we see a holy God, and he's a holy God, we should see in us how unholy we are. Because we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. But God is. God is holy. God is mighty. God is our provider. He's our provider. He is... He's the one that enables the faith rise within us. Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be uplifted and thrown into the sea, or this mulberry bush, be ripped up and thrown into the sea. But what, what Jesus is saying is that just have faith. Because if you have as small faith, as small faith as possible, the tiniest faith, the tiniest faith that will say, Lord God, I want to open that door and I want you to come into my life. The tiniest faith to do that and the ability to lay down your pride not worry about what other people think but the, the ability to lay down your pride and to to say Lord God yeah would you forgive me would you forgive me if my people will humble themselves and pray it goes on it says then I will heal their land I'll hear their voices from heaven I'll hear them, but there's a humbling, there's a repenting. Unless we repent, unless we repent, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Paul says in Galatians 5 that the acts of sinful nature are, you know, are anger, impatience, yeah, drunkenness and orgies and lusts and all that stuff, but anger, impatience, simple things. And he said if we continue like this, We'll have no place in the kingdom. You know, the, the Bible's very clear. We need, to get, we need to get to grips with the reality of what God's saying to us. 
We have the most amazing, awesome God that loves us. The most amazing, awesome God that, that sent his son. And it is the cross. It is at the cross where we are saved. It is at the cross, the cross. The cross is it's a doorway to salvation. The cross of Jesus. And Jesus died on that cross. And he said to his father, it is finished. That meant that he'd made a way. The Bible records that in Matthew that the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. Before Jesus died on the cross, you would have to go through, I don't know, a priest, a high priest, the one that was chosen to go into the Holy of Holies on yours and my behalf to say, Father, Peter falls outside, out in the temple courts, he sinned, would you forgive him his sin? But now, Jesus died on that cross and the temple curtain has been torn in two, so there's no curtain no longer, so anybody, so we can all go, we can all go into the presence of God. And Matthew 6, 6 explains that so clearly that, that we can just go into our place. It doesn't have to be a room, it could be anywhere, it could be when you go walking, it could be when you're driving your car, but a place where there's just you and God. Now I've made this video this morning and, and I've made it to encourage you. If there's anyone watching this and they're thinking, you know what, I need the refreshing of God, I need the light of Jesus Christ, the light in my life. I need God to come, I need God to heal me. I need God to come near to me. Have faith. You only need the tiniest little bit, like a grain of sand. A grain of sand, this is sand. A grain of sand. It's all you need for faith. You, we don't need much. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. You know in Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10, it talks about the armour of God. And, and he talks about, you know, like putting on the helmet of salvation, putting on the shield of faith, putting on the belt of truth, putting on feet, shoes, boots that are ready to proclaim the good news of Jesus, that are ready to share the word, the sword of the spirit, to know the scriptures, to know the word of God, so that you can say, when, when trouble comes, no, I have a God in heaven, I've got the same God. Who caused that sun to rise? I've got the same God. He's my God. He's my God. He's my God. And though the enemy comes against me, my God will stand with me. My God is for me, not against me. Your God is for you, not against you. It's the God who created heaven and earth. It's the God who sent Jesus Christ, his son, into a virgin where Jesus was born, the son of God, who at 30 years old started an amazing ministry. He got baptized. He got baptized and he wandered out into the wilderness where he's tempted for 40 days. And he came back rejoicing, conquering, the conquering king. This is Jesus. This is who we believe. God said... In the last days, there'll be a godlessness where people will love things that are bad and hate things that are good. It talks about being godless. And it might be that you're watching this video and if you've never given your life to Jesus, never opened that door of your heart to invite him to come in, you're living a godless that life, a godless life. Yeah, you might do good things. You might do things that are good things that are great and that's wonderful but but don't live a godless life let God be a part of it it's not all about you taking the glory for things that you've done it's about him taking the glory for things that he's done we are so blessed you know Donna and I we we head up a, a, a charity called Orphan Up and we do work in India and we work with some amazing people in India we help provide education for children. We help put wells in villages where they have no water. And we tell people, and I must admit, 
happened last night actually we were telling the story and uh, we could get excited but you know what a real sense within me I thought yeah we're doing that and it's great but um, all glory to God not glory to me and people say oh you're great well done I can't believe you're doing things like that you know and I don't want to take any glory because it's all him I would have never have thought to do it any of them things until Jesus Christ came into my life to save me he came into my life to save me. And in Ephesians 6, where it talks about the armor, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the blessed breastplate of righteousness, the sword, the sword of the spirit, the boots fitted, to, to go and take the good news, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, that all people can know God, that they do not need to live a godless life. Because if you live a godless life, if you live a godless life, if it's all about you and look at me, I'm not great, I've done this and I've done that. If it's all about you, then when the final day comes, it'll be burned up. Because it's all about you. And when it's all about me, my pride, it's worthless. <coughs> <coughs> but when it's about him, it's got awesome value. We serve an amazing God. And so I guess to finish this small video, Lord, what would you want to say? The scripture talks about, says as deep, cries out to deep. As deep calls to deep that when we open our hearts and our lives to God, He goes deep into our hearts. You know, many of us have, have, have suffered in our childhood or in our upbringing at school, whether it was just simply to, through bullying or whether we're bullied at home or abused or ignored or put down or you'll never be any good, whatever it might be. And those things sit deep in our hearts and those things, they're deep in there. And they can pollute our thinking. And when God comes into our lives, he goes deep down and he brings healing. There's healing in the power of Jesus. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. And you invite Jesus, Lord Jesus, would you go deep into my heart, deep into my life? Lord God, you know, would you take me deeper? Remember when I was at school, Lord, and I was bullied. And I used to hide. And I used to cry for hours. And I didn't know, and I wanted to take my own life. And yet you, God, the God who created all this, the amazing God, you lift me up. You want to lift me up. You want to come to me and embrace me and encourage me and strengthen me. And why did I mention Ephesians? Because he also talks about having the shield of faith. And the shield of faith comes with that mustard seed of faith, or that grain of sand of faith, where you open your heart to Jesus, and he comes in, and then when you start to believe, it's if you will believe in me, believe, and it shall be done, believe, and you shall be saved, believe, and you shall be healed. It's all about believing. And I believe that the God who created all this is the same God that wants to rescue you and strengthen you and not only you, but your family and your friends and everyone that you know. We need to turn to our God. We need to come back. If my people will humble themselves, we need to humble ourselves to God and pray. Humble ourselves. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Humble ourselves and pray. Then our God, who sees, and he will see, will hear our prayer and he will rescue our land. We are so blessed. I'm sure you could probably not even see me correctly there on, because the light is on my back because the light is coming from the sun. That the sun, and that reminds me, you know, that the son of God has got your back and he's got my back. We just have to believe. Will you be encouraged today in your faith? Would you be encouraged today, whatever you're doing? Matthew 6, 6 learn to pray as disciples said teach us how to pray they said it's how you should pray jesus said 
Our Father who art in heaven, the same Father who created all this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Hallelujah, as it is in heaven. And this is what we need. We need God's will on earth as it is in heaven. An amazing God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm praying today that the will of God would be done in my life. That I would be used by God for God's will to be done in my life. On earth as it is in heaven. That the faith that God's given me would reach up. Oh, Father God, would you send your Holy Spirit? It goes on, it said, give us this day. Pray and ask God, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. You see, it's right in the center. Forgive us our trespasses. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And Father, would you forgive us? Would you forgive me my trespasses? Would you forgive whoever's listened to this? And you can ask God to forgive you. What have you done today? What did you do last week? What sin are you hiding in your life? You know, God sees it anyway. And all it does is becomes a stumbling block. It becomes a weed that'll strangle your faith. And it'll become something that stops you from pursuing this King of Kings and this Lord of Lords. I love Jesus Christ. I love the Lord. I love him so much. I pray that God could use me mightier than ever. I pray that I would hear his voice. And I pray the same for you. I pray that I'd be hungry and thirsty. In Isaiah 55, he said, come, come, those who are thirsty, those who are hungry, come. Without money, it's free. Hallelujah. Just like this sunrise is free. It just happens. I didn't pay for somebody to do special effects for the sun, it's free. And every day it comes and we forget that in our lives there's a God who loves us so much and it's free. The oxygen that you're breathing is free. But we get caught up in a world, a flesh world that's all about the money. It's all about the money. And many people make money their God. And I want to encourage you today. I want to ask you a, a question. Who is your God? Who is your God? When Jesus turned to his disciples and said, who do the people say I am? Some say Elijah, some one of the prophets, teacher. Who do you say I am, Jesus said. And then Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, you know. Our God is awesome. And if that was the sun there, to end this video, there'd be no fitting way to end it than to say Jesus is standing at the door of your life and your heart today. And you can open the door. You might already have opened it. But you know, the weeds, they can go and they entangle and they even can almost force the door shut can almost forget and cause you to forget who he is, who it is that saved you. So I would encourage you today, be amazingly encouraged because the God of all creation loves you. In Joshua, Joshua says, choose them this day who you will serve. And then he says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, as for me, and my house, my life, I will serve the Lord. So I could be encouraged today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't a waffle. I just so desperately wanted, I was just hungry and thirsty to do a video down here. And what better morning than to do this. So I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm gonna pray for you. Father, I pray the same God that created the heavens and the earth. This God, the God that holds us in our hands Father God, I'm going to pray today. Would you lift us up? Would you lift us up, O oh God? Would you strengthen us, O oh God? And Father God, would you put your hand upon my life? And upon the hand, put your hand upon the life of whoever it is that's listening to this prayer today. 
and the powerful name of Jesus. Be encouraged. I don't know about you, but I'm going to walk and continue towards the sun. I hope you will too. God bless you.